Radio Bypass. Bringing you rock and roll music that deserves to be heard. Discover new bands. Hear some old favorites on Radio Bypass. Hello, everyone. We have a returning guest today who is spreading the sunshine across the world. But he has sunshine, to be exact. We're joined by Aaron Lee. How are you, Aaron? I'm doing great, Ralph. Great to see you again. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks for coming by again. Glad to have you. And loving the new single, Bahia Sunshine, dude. Great song. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, you got it, man. Yeah, it's, it's great. I think since the last time you were here, you actually, this is, I think, probably your first original single um, that you've released since the last time you were here. But you also did a great cover uh, that you released at the end, toward the end of 21 to Children of the Revolution, which was also stellar. Thank you. Uh, but of course, I'm always more excited to hear your own stuff. So Bahia Sunshine, for anybody that hasn't seen the video for the song, hopefully you've heard the song here on, on our weekly music show, but and you'll hear it again at the end of this interview. But uh, hopefully you checked out the video too that Aaron put out there because it is just, it's a lyric video, but it's a lot of fun. And dude, love all the colors. It just it just feels like, even though we're getting closer to fall now, it just feels like such a summer song to begin with. And then th with that video, it just is bright and cheerful and um, it just feels good. It's a feel good video. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I feel the same way about it. Um, I think it turned out, I mean, as entertaining as it can for a lyric video, you know, I've seen some lyric videos before and I like this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. I actually had fun with it, you know. Um, did you did you put that whole thing together yourself? I, I assume, that, well, I guess we should talk about the song first. That's probably yeah, all. Yeah. Um, and then we'll talk about the video. So tell us about the song. You wrote it and I assume you're probably playing everything on it. Yes, sir. Yeah, I wrote it, performed it, mixed it, uh, you know, on down the line, man. I'm a I'm an assembly line sort of uh, situation going on. Um, yeah, you know, Bahia Sunshine, uh, you know, most people have been asking, what's the title mean? Well, Bahia is just a name that I knew this girl when I was really young, like five years old. She was the same age. She lived down the street from me. Uh, we used to play together, you know, just on the street. And I always remembered her name. And just thought it was a really cool, unique, pretty name. And, and I just threw it into a song title and started writing a song that I think leans a little more into a spirituality kind of situation uh, with some uh, image conjuring lyrics mm -hmm. um, that, you know, kind of maybe could provoke uh, thoughts more than uh, having a, a, a hit with a message, you know, direct. Um, right. So there's a lot of play in there, but uh, you know, it's, it's coming from, from that sort of space is uh, you know, a spiritual space. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I hear that. And it feels it too with the, again, with the graphics, something can see some of that connection with some of the graphics you chose in the video too. And then yeah. the video, did you put all that together or did somebody direct that for you? So I had a guy that I was working with, um and he had delivered a video that i was gonna live with and put out and i decided at literally a week before i was gonna put it out there were some scenes in it i didn't like it didn't jive with with what i wanted to do how i wanted to present it so i, I went in and cut out the scenes that i didn't want there and basically learned how to use the software and learned how to do a lyric video on the fly Nice. So uh, there's uh, about, it, I'd say about a 60-40 split of uh, cuts in there that I did myself. So yeah, now uh, I think, you know, I always say this, don't pay, th don't pay people for things that you can do yourself, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, although I got to tell you, man, I may have to pay you to teach me because I don't know how to edit together a video very well. So I need lessons. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you're under the gun like that, a little time, uh, you know, constraint, you, you, you learn quick. Yeah. Yeah. It's just knowing even what you need, though, you know, what, yeah. what software do you need? And, you know, which is one of my problems. I'm not even sure you, know, you get Adobe stuff. I don't know. But um, but no, you did a great job. It looks, it looks awesome. It looks awesome. So now that you got that out, and um, and like I said, well, you you did a great cover of of that T Rex song uh, toward the end of last year. Uh, 
I, and I know you're always out playing a lot, you're working a lot, but hopefully you're making room to record more music for our ears that are always eager to hear new stuff from Aaron Lee. Um, and, and you put out that EP, which was what we were talking about the last time you were here, um, which, by the way, you guys could still get that um, if you haven't already. But um, but any chance of a new, maybe full length record sometime soon from Mr. Lee? Yeah, you know, it's it's looking like a possibility of a full length now. Um, just two weeks ago, it didn't look that way. <laughs> and so right before I got on with you, I was working on another song uh, recording. And and uh, and as soon as we wrap up, I'm going to run back in and and keep pushing. But um, yeah, the material's flowing right now. So I may lean into the idea of uh, trying to do a full length. And to me, a full length uh, would probably be like eight songs. You mm -hmm. know, I like the old school way of like when Rush would put out a record or, you know, it was like four songs on each side or like the Montrose record, you know, the first Montrose. I think, what was that? Eight songs, you know? Right. And probably 30 minutes. I, I, I personally, um, you know, God, I mean, if you remember back in the 90s when I put a, a putting CDs out with like 16, 17 songs on it, I just I don't want to uh, bash people over the head with so much material to try to digest. It's hard enough to get people to listen to one song, let alone a whole record, um, right. you know, 10 or 12 songs or what. So I'm thinking eight songs could be cool and uh, do a vinyl run or something. This is all I'm just thinking of this at, at the moment right now, you know, sure. so things could change. But um, no, that, that looks like it could be moving in that direction. That would be great. That would be really exciting. I, I would love that. And and yeah, as far as uh, keeping it a little bit shorter, but still full length, you're right. I mean, we, of course, we were constrained by how much you could put on vinyl, which was part of the reason eight songs was usually the max. Maybe sometimes you'd get nine. Um, and yes, I do remember when all of a sudden there's 16, 17, even 18 tracks on a yeah. CD. And I kind of liked it and kind of didn't same as you, you know, it's almost from, from a, 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 a standpoint of leave them want, leave them wanting more type of thing. I think the eight songs, half hour, 40 minutes is perfect because for me as a fan of music, anyway, when I'm done, if it's a shorter length out record like that, it does leave me wanting more. And then it makes me go back maybe to another album of theirs that maybe I wouldn't listen to if there was 18 songs on the new album type of thing, you know, goes back. It makes me go back and revisit if I've got more time. So I think that that's great. Um, so, yeah, I, I really look forward to that. So what else yeah, and, do you know and, and, about? Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to uh, elaborate on what you're saying there about uh, the material on, on a record, you know, um, how, how many songs is is eight songs i think too is like where you want to like start over and listen again you know like mm -hmm. right there like the record ends and then you just want to hear some more so you put it back on you know i do that all the time so yeah that's I know, true I know the feeling yeah yeah that's true i didn't think about that how often i've done that but i guess i have done that quite a few times flip it back over when i was doing vinyl so yeah i think you're right about that yeah no i like it well, what else can you tell us about the song anything else uh you know about about what it's about other than what you already shared with us well that's i mean was it, was it a song that you wrote like that it just kind of came or have you been working on it for a while i had the uh the music bed for it i, I had the arrangement and um you know all the instrumentation was written many many years ago had that sitting there in my mind uh i even did some demos of it um you know 15 years ago of this music but, you know, as, as time went on and I revisited it, the idea, I um, used different instrumentation. I mean, it was written on an acoustic guitar, so it actually had a more folky feel to it um, than it does now with, you know, the, the synthesizers going and the, you know, big guitars on it. And um, mm -hmm. so, it you know, and that's when it started taking on more of a like a Bowie vibe, a T-Rex kind of Beatlesque kind of you know that that coming from that the 70s kind of sounds you know right well i definitely thought uh it had a, a t-rex sound for sure that's why i thought it was a great single to put out after having you know your last release being a cover of a t-rex yeah. song. I thought it was a good fit because i hear that it's kind of like that bounce to it i don't know how to describe it exactly but but it, it definitely gave me that feel though 
Yeah, it's just the groove, you know, uh, kind of like a bang a gong groove or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely nailed it, I think. But yeah, well, that's cool, man. Um, you know, you you are interesting to me because you have so many influences, right? I mean, Bowie. I know you're a big Prince fan. Um, T Rex, obviously, stuff like that. And then you also like the heavy, heavier stuff, right? I mean. Y&T or Aerosmith or whatever. Um, so it's kind of interesting to me when 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 you hear music in your head and you're and you're working on songs. I mean, do you ever think hmm, this should be heavy or this should be acoustic or this should be more pop? You know, does any of that like enter into your head during the process? Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, uh, riffage to me like guitar riffs, you know like a wine tea riff, like Mean Streak or something. That's like a, a great guitar riff, you know? Got plenty of those. But I'm I'm sort of saving that up for for the opportunity, if it ever comes about, is to get in a room with with my band, Wine T, and right, write right. some new music, you know? So I've got a lot of that stuff just kind of floating around right now. But um, my natural, uh, I guess, inclination to just move, move a song forward is it's just that, the 70s type of stuff is is so ingrained in me um mm -hmm. you know in the influences and things um you know even early 80s and and mid 80s you know uh you know so it, it i think it's just that that the the influences run so deep that's a natural thing that comes out so when it comes to let's say writing a harder rock song or something I see it more as being in a room with a band to do that. I mean, not that I can't do it by myself, but, um, you know, I don't know. I, honestly, I mean, when it when it comes to the heavier side, there, it's definitely there. I used to be in a band called Echo of Souls, which, um, you know, I, I you can go to AaronLee.com and you can actually order uh, on my store there, the Echo of Souls disc. And that stuff was all tuned down to C and real heavy um, crunchy guitars and, and all those riffs on that record I wrote. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that stuff is there, I can do it, but for some reason, this, the, the solo songs I've been putting out since 2020, um, I'm kind of just, I, I like this road I'm going down. It's, it's a consistent, um, yet different because let's say the song live for today that I had put out. And I think the last time we spoke, one mm -hmm. of the last times uh, we spoke, um, that song was a single that I, that I put out and that's definitely heavier than by Hia sunshine, you know? Right. Um, so, you know, that, that heavy riff stuff is there, but, um, you know, it still ties in with, let's say the song insanity, the first single that I'd put out in 2020. So mm -hmm. things are, are aligning well, the catalog that I'm starting to, to build. Right. Um, and so I think if I was to lean into some heavier hard rock stuff, it would probably be in a whole different, like, you know, call it something and then gotcha. create a band around it or something, you know? Got it. Got it. Or like you said, hopefully maybe someday this will come up with the Y&T boys. Yes. I know yeah. we talked about that last time too. Some, you know, hopefulness that it would be really cool if you get a chance to record together. Um, with Y&T. And I guess since we brought up Y&T, Dave Manichetti doing well? Dave is doing great. Doctors gave him the green light on uh, his health. He's uh, in remission. Uh, the man has so much energy and uh, the voice is just on fire. His playing oh. is on fire. Yeah. Um, it, he's at the top of his game and I can't believe it. The man is going to be 70 years old in December. Um, so, you know, uh, let that be a lesson. Take care of yourself, people. <laughs> and right. you can rock until you're well into your 70s, you know, and not lose a thing. And keep your voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, and it is Y&T is coming up on the 50th anniversary in uh, 2024. 24. Yeah. So we will be doing a, a lot of shows in 24, celebrating the band's 50th anniversary. We're going to Japan. We're doing all the uh, usual re regional stuff that we do. Um, we will be hitting some spots around the States. Uh, we're doing monsters, of rock cruise. Uh, we will be doing UK, Europe. So 
the plans are are in order and uh hopefully nothing derails us yeah let's hope not i know i've been hearing about covid going up a little bit again but hopefully not anything that shuts down the world again yeah um, yeah that would be cool to celebrate 50 years i mean that's a big deal you know um so i think it'd be great if you guys do that i did see that you do have a couple of dates booked at the mystic still for this year in november yeah 17th and 18th at the mystic theater and then i saw uh january get some stuff in california again and japan it looks like mm -hmm. you're heading over there so um yeah i look forward to seeing that calendar get filled out in 24 and celebrate 50 years of the greatest band man <laughs> yeah that's awesome yes, sir i agree yeah yeah i love yt i still remember my discovery i think for you i think you told me it was the uh black tiger record i think mm -hmm. was was your en entree and yeah. for me it was uh uh, the the kid that I met that that knew about the band it was the first yesterday and today album but um but I just been a solid fan ever since and been lucky enough to see the band many times over the years um and who knows maybe I'll make it to the Mystic Theater because I thought that would be kind of cool because I like the live record from there so well uh Friday night there are tickets available to this whatever today is uh, I don't even know what the date is today but uh Saturday is sold out already. So Friday nice. is available and I am opening the show Friday. I'll be doing an acoustic set. That's right. I forgot about that. That's right. You're opening for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. And, I, and will Bahia Sunshine be part of it? I think it it may make it into the 30 minute set as an acoustic number. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So you're going to do all Aaron Lee or are you doing a couple of covers in there too? Yeah, I'm going to do, uh, I think, four or five originals and throw a few covers in there if I have time to get a two or three in there. Yeah. Nice. Oh, that'll be great. Oh, yeah, it'll be I'll fun. Try to make it. That'll be awesome. Yeah, Friday, November 17th. Awesome. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that's good. Well, I'm, I'm really happy to hear that, that, that Dave's doing good and YNT's still going strong. Um, and coming up on 50 years, yeah, I can't believe it, man. Time flies. Yeah, well, I can't believe it that I was four years old when they came out. <laughs> yeah, right. And and you've been in the band now seven years. Yeah, a little over seven too. years, yeah. 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 yeah, that's awesome. That, that's amazing. In fact, I need an updated, I've, I don't have it hung up yet, but I've got a Y&T picture, but I got to get an updated 8 by 10 with, with you now in the bass role. <laughs> I've got an older picture before you. So I got to get caught up. Um, well, that's cool, man. That's awesome. And then Aaron Lee, uh, yourself, you've got some dates coming up around town this weekend. Uh, Friday night, you're out at Dark Heart Brewing, which I know you love that place in Sacramento. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Saturday, you're in uh, the Airport Saloon in Cameron Park, which I've not been. I may have to check that one out. And Hillenbrand Farmhouse Brewery in Newcastle on Sunday. You're working a three-day weekend here. Yeah, and let me let me tell you something, Ralph. I mean, you've seen my acoustic gigs. I don't take breaks either. I I just play two, mm -hmm. three hours straight. And uh, when I'm doing a, a three in a row like this weekend, uh, that's a lot of singing. <laughs> you know, it is the guitar playing part of it isn't you know such a, a feat. But I'll tell you, man, that's what I have so much respect for Dave Menachetti, man. I don't know how he does it days on end at the level he does. So uh, yeah. Yeah, if you all, anyone out there available in the in the local area here, come out and see me. Yeah, for sure. And if you've ne if you've never caught his solo shows, guys, you got to check it out. And he's he, he, these twelve string guitars that he plays at these gigs just sound gorgeous. So besides the great singing and the great playing, I just love the sound of those guitars you use too when you're doing those gigs. Thank you. So yeah. go check them out this weekend. Um, that Dark Heart Brewing, I know I went there to see you once. And that's a cool place, too. So if you've never been there, the venue is kind of cool, too. So, And yeah. I look forward to seeing this Cameron Park place because I've not been there. So that'd be kind of neat. All right. Well, good. Well, anything else, buddy? Well, AaronLee.com. If you're interested, you can pick up uh, any of the music there. I've got some T-shirts. I've got all the merch stuff, show dates uh yt hit uh yt rocks.com and you can uh see the here's another thing the yt documentary that's been out for a yes. while now uh you can get that on prime it's available just talk into your remote and say yt 
documentary. It'll come right up. Uh, yeah, so all your YNT stuff at yntrocks.com. And that's about it, man. I'm boring, bro. <laughs> Oh, you're that. Oh, you're that. And you're and you're going to be back on here before we know it, talking about a whole album and yeah. come up with a cool title for the album. But uh, yeah, so yeah, everybody, this is this has been uh, Aaron Lee here, bass player for YNT, but also creating a lot of cool music on his own. A lot of good gigs coming up this weekend. He does these solo acoustic things around town on a somewhat regular basis too so if you're ever visiting if you're not from here and you're ever visiting the sacramento area you know keep an eye on his website too because you got to see what he does it's it's really a great time a great time Come and on, he's a sunshine dude once again love it can't Thank wait you. to hear more and uh everybody right now stick around in case you missed it on the music show we're gonna play bahia sunshine right now so aaron lee thank you for coming on radio bypass thank you ralph and, uh, much luck to you and and have a great rest of your year <laughs> you too buddy thank you uh here you go but he has sunshine everybody Shine is in